Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this webinar on how to use the Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today on this webinar on how to use the Keywall Pro design software presented by Keystone Retaining Wall Systems. Before we start today's presentation, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping items that will ensure we have a smooth presentation. We have placed all phones on mute to cut down on background noise and to ensure everyone can hear the presentation. We will be recording today's webinar. A link to the recording will be sent to all attendees in a follow-up email tomorrow. Our webinar today is scheduled to last for one hour. We'll have about 45 minutes of presentation time followed by a question and answer period. If you have a question, please type your question in the question box at any time, and we'll get to those at the end of the presentation. Our speaker today will be Keith Miller, Technical Service Specialist at Keystone Retaining Wall Systems. Keith has 25 years of experience working with segmental retaining walls and geosynthetic reinforcements. Keith is Keith has worked on segmental retaining wall industry in a variety of roles, including design, technical support, sales, product development, and promotion. He's worked on various committees at NCMA and ASTM, and has worked with multiple DOTs on the implementation of segmental walls into their approved product list. Now, I'll turn the presentation over to Keith. Thank you, David. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen appropriately this morning. I want to thank you for attending the webinar that we're going to have today. Uh, I'm going to go through this. Uh, we'll hold questions till the end. Uh, and again, I appreciate everybody showing up. We're going to start out here with a little introduction to the software, and then I'll get into the program and step you through the program as we go along. Uh, Keystone has spent uh, several years here uh, working on the development of a new software program to replace the old Keywall Pro or the old Keywall uh, software and the Keywall or KeyDraw software. Uh, out of this came uh, Keywall Pro. This software was developed by uh, the Keystone Engineering Department. Uh, Craig Moritz and Pat Stemke uh, worked hard on this program uh, along with the software developers of CTI. Uh, they helped uh, uh, develop this new software for us. Uh, the old uh, Keywall uh, program uh, is going to cease to be in existence after a while, and I'll discuss that a little bit later. I'm assuming, uh, and I hope everybody has downloaded the uh, software uh, from our website. Um, I'm currently on our website here. It is available at keystonewalls.com uh, slash software resources. Uh, the Keywall Pro design software will cover uh, various different methodologies, and I'll get into the methodologies here in a bit. Uh, we're going to have allowable stress design and LRFD design that will be con contained in both NCMA and ranking design methodologies uh, for the ASD methodologies, and then LRFD uh, for the ASHDO methodologies. Uh, we also have a version in there that fo uh, follows along with the old Keywall program, the Australian uh, methodology for uh, the people down in Australia. Um, the program is designed for professionals, uh, not for homeowner use and that type of stuff. Uh, we uh, uh, put the um, a, a cost of $10 or $9.99 for the program to be downloaded uh, with the intention there of uh, uh, hopefully keeping homeowners from downloading the program and also to help us maintain uh, the database uh, for the program. If you've already downloaded the program, uh, you basically click on the uh, purchase the program here and uh, it takes you to a page. You fill out your information. Uh, you uh, get a code for, uh, for, with that information uh, that you're able to use the software on two different computers uh, with the same software code. If you wanna use it on more computers in your office, you'll need to download it more than once. Uh, also on that page, uh, we have some uh, quick start guides available to help you um, and help anybody in the office um, understand how the program works and what steps you need to go through for the program. Uh, also, uh, when you do download the program, the, the program will uh, have the data files 
uh, containing block and grid and uh, shear and connection data already implemented into the program. If there is some uh, block system uh, that is not contained in there or geogrid system that's not contained in the program, uh, please contact us uh, for those data files. Uh, and also there are some data files available right from the website uh, that you're able to uh, download also. So uh, check that also. Um, uh, here's an in, uh, example of the quick start guide. Uh, we have file management and saving of, of the software, uh, simple wall design, and how to import and uh, update the data files. I uh, also want to make you aware of the technical resources that are available uh, on the Keystone website, uh, the design software, we have the design manuals, uh, a lot of people are familiar with those, construction manuals, uh, our high-tech evaluations uh, for Key System 1 and Key System 2. We got a lot of typical details uh, on the website also that are available for download and uh, remember to use our in-house technical support uh, that we have available here. So if you have questions uh, regarding the software as you get familiar with it uh, or need any other technical data, always feel free to give us a call. Uh, there is a website link uh, that can get us questions and we'll distribute those to the appropriate parties. Um, as I was talking about before, the old Keywall program will be um, going away at some point in time. As your licenses uh, come up, uh, we and you need to renew that, uh, they will, we will renew those on a three month uh, extension type basis. So the, the key wall and the key wall pro program are written in different language, so they do not talk to each other. So if you are using key wall and you wanna move to key wall pro, I would start moving that data over there and start uh, using the key wall pro program. Uh, they are very similar, but they do not talk to each other. Uh, and like I said, if your license runs out, uh, we'll look, look at those on a case-by-case -case basis uh, to update that uh, so, you don't, so you still can get to your old data files. Uh, the program will still be uh, in existence. Uh, and if you get into a situation where you have an old project that you uh, need to uh, bring up after a couple years, uh, we will be able to service those on an uh, as-needed basis. Part of the key wall, uh, and Keywall Pro is our old Keystone design manual. The design manual is specific to uh, the design of retaining walls and how the Keywall uh, programs uh, has worked. It goes through the design methodologies uh, in there. Uh, these, this manual will be updated to uh, incorporate the Keywall Pro uh, design software uh, into it. Uh, that is an ongoing process uh, and we should see that come out uh, in the in the future here, I'm not sure on a timeline on that yet, but uh, the information is still uh, viable uh, for the Keywall Pro. It's just not dedicated to the Keywall Pro program. Uh, the the Keywall Pro uh, program, uh, just like Keywall was, uh, implements uh, other design methodologies. Uh, we will have uh, NCMA design methodology. Uh, if you don't have a copy of the design manual for segmental retaining walls, uh, that is available through the National Concrete Masonry Association. Uh, at a fee, I believe it is, uh, go to their website and you can uh, check that out. Uh, also, we will have AASHTO design methodology uh, in the program. Uh, our program will have 2010 version and this 2014 version. Uh, if you want uh, guidance on that, uh, see the AASHTO website uh, to uh, download or purchase uh, their design manual also. Um, I'm going to do a quick little uh, program uh, or a wall design uh, that um, is very simple, uh, but it'll show the, what we can do with the design program. Um, and here's the example I'm going to be using. Uh, it's an example uh, where, where we have a retaining wall. Uh, parking lot behind it, we have some grading uh, on top of the wall and on the bottom of the wall. Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody is a bit, um, well aware how to, to lay out a wall, but uh, just as an example, uh, I always lay my walls out looking at the face of the wall so I figure out which is the low side, uh, determine the low side, start my stationing at the left, work my way over to the right, assign my um, lower elevations and upper elevations uh, based on the grading. And then I look at the grading to determine uh, what type of loading conditions we would have. Uh, this situation is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have a, 
a grade sloping up here, but a level uh, toe situation, grade sloping up here, but a level backfill here, and then we have a parking surcharge on the back side of the wall. Uh, it was nice enough in this uh, project that we did get a re uh, soils report. Uh, uh, so we're gonna follow this soils report in the program uh, analysis. I'm gonna start my program here. So when you open up the Keywall Pro program, uh, this is your start screen for the Keywall Pro program. And I'm gonna kind of step through this as, as, um, as you would in any wall design. Uh, the program opens itself up. I've inputted the data for the, for the project I'm, I'm gonna talk about, but I'm gonna go through uh, how the program uh, can work. Uh, you can import a new project. Uh, you can, new full wall design would be a complete wall design where you would have uh, stationing involved, uh, top and bottom of wall situations, a new wall section analysis would be like the old key wall program, uh, the key wall program, uh, where you just do a section analysis of, of an individual wall height and individual loading conditions. Uh, you can come in and open up an existing project. Uh, you can save uh, your your project to different locations. You can load projects uh, uh, from different locations. One nice feature in this that uh, you can create templates. Uh, I always say is you. You can create a template um, based on if you're doing a similar type of block, similar type of soil conditions, uh, you can set up a template that'd be active. Another good example would be if you're working uh, uh, with DOTs uh, around the country and different state DOTs have different little uh, twists to the way they want you to design their wall, you could set up a, a, a design for the state of Minnesota or the state of Iowa and have a template already created for that. Uh, we do export our um, uh, results into a PDF report in a PDF format. I'll go through that at the end. Uh, nice things that the program also does is exports this into AutoCAD uh, with wall sections and uh, wall profiles. And then, not today, I won't be able to explain G slope and Risa slope just based on the time, uh, but we can export the geometries uh, created in the program here uh, to those. Uh, two different slope stability programs. Now, we won't have the ability to uh, export to other different type of programs uh, that gets into the software development and, and way beyond my scope here. Um, if you have a different data file that we wanna import in here, that would be an import block definition file. Uh, we come to the new the wall page. We can create new walls, rename walls, copy walls, copy walls with stations, uh, copy wall with stations would be a situation where you want to have, uh, you got one wall on the site, uh, you want to change soil parameters and check what that's going to do. Uh, you can copy a wall with stations and they'll copy all that information over and you can change soil parameters and differentiate them uh, from one to the other and keep uh, both walls. And then we can uh, delete the wall. Uh, settings, we have a standard mode and a professional mode uh, for the settings, and I'll show you what the, uh, those two modes uh, do in, in the program. Uh, we can come into options. We have some options here that we can click on. Uh, the, the program is loaded in default mode, uh, which is basically standard design uh, practice uh, for NCMA and for AASHTO, uh, but we can also include uh, different things uh, into those uh, different methodologies. Um, it, in the NCMA method, we could include the vertical forces by uh, clicking on the box or on clicking the box, uh, include embedment in the bearing capacity for NCMA, include embedment in the bearing capacity for AASHTO, uh, use vertical earth pressure factors, uh, and then include, and this is in the uh, Australian design methodology, uh, include passive pressure. Uh, enable live and dead load reduction due to offset. Uh, what we're able to do with the program is all offset the, the loads. Um, so if you have a surcharge load that's, say, five feet behind the back top of the wall, we can pinpoint where that's going to be. And by clicking on this, we can uh, reduce that load uh, based on that location um, in the program. I'll go back to, I'll go back to settings, sorry, here. Uh, reinforcement, uh, what we can do on this page here uh, ignore crest toppling during generation of reinforcement. What this does is if we click on or click off the box, 
if we have a load or a surcharge that's close to the back face of the wall, um, we can um, ignore it showing that it's a failure. It'll still analyze it, but it won't come up as a failure mechanism, and I'll show you that there. In these option pages here, what we have going on is this is uh, for the program, and every time you open the program, these are, would be your initial default settings. You can generate uh, grid increments based on uh, a length. So the grid increments here, with it at one foot, it would generate an uh, increment of every foot. If I had it at six inches or half a foot, it'd be every half a foot in length or two feet in length, whatever number you want to have there. Uh, in your stability analysis, this is for internal compound stability. Uh, you can set your uh, entry points and uh, your factors of safety uh, for your internal compound stability analysis in the NCMA methodology. Uh, you want to set yourself up when you start the program is direct your save where your programs are going to be saved to a root folder. So basically here at Keystone, I have everything in, in a, all my projects in a 2018 folder. So I have this set up. So when I start the program and I'll, and I'll get into the folder path mechanism, um, and it'll point to right there so I can, I don't have to click so, through so many folders. Uh, the reports are also customizable. Uh, you can enter your com company name, you can import an image. Uh, and address information. So the report printout is customizable to uh, your specific uh, engineering firm. And in the other, uh, you have the default unit of measure. Um, and then also what we are also able to do is on the profiles that the uh, program prints out, uh, create an interval of the bond pattern or the block pattern. And by setting this up, the way I have it set up right now is every 60 feet, it'll put a three foot width of block. If I would set this to zero, it would cover the whole entire wall profile in, uh, in a block, uh, showing it with blocks on there. And then we'll have a help menu. Uh, this help menu is under development right now, and, and that will be populated as you go. The way the program acts is every time you open up the program, if you're connected to the internet, the program will search out uh, for updates, and those updates will uh, be populated in the what new, what's new uh, section here. And that pops up, and it just tells you uh, revision histories, and that you'll be able to see that happening. Um, and then just about the program. So I'm going to start with the program here. I've populated this uh, already. Uh, first thing I usually do is when I open up the program, I'll go to file, I'll create a new project. Uh, I'm going to typically create a new full wall design and I'll click on that. And then I'll, once that opens up, I'll have a blank page here and then I'll set it to a file location where I want the program to be saved or my data files to be saved. This, once this is set, the program also actively saves everything as you go along. Uh, so that that is um, automatic. So when you close out of it, it, it will ask you to save a backup file to it, but it's also saved in the program. Uh, and you'll get used to that as you work out, work through the program. Uh, design methodology, we'll import our, import our customer information. We'll pick out what design methodology you want to have. The program is loaded, like I said before, with ASHTO 2010. ASHTO 2015, Australian Design Methodology, NCMA 3rd Edition, and Ranking Analysis. For today's example, we're going to pick NCMA 3rd Edition. Um, when I was in the settings mode before, you saw that I had US and SI units here. Uh, if I click on one or the other, that sets it up for this specific job. Uh, the, in the settings, it was a universal one, so it would always open up in US um, um, measure. Uh, you can put in some project notes. Uh, I can come in here and click on a wall. I can name, uh, I'll give a name for the wall, and I'll populate my second wall. My first wall has already been populated, and that's one we'll do, uh, work off of today. If you have revisions, you can uh, create revisions off of one sim single wall and put yourself some revision notes in there. Uh, so, if, say, if you designed a, a, a project, 
and you want to come in and make some soil changes to it, you can copy the, the first project, create a revision, make yourself some notes that the soil parameters change or some wall heights have changed. So that, that's a nice feature there. Uh, we'll go into our retaining wall here. On our first page, it comes up with our design criteria information. Uh, and it talks, since we have the National Concrete Masonry Association third edition, uh, it gives an exam, um, discussion there. Uh, empirical checks are max reinforcement separation. Uh, these, everything that you see in the yellow here is uh, default per the program, and then you can adjust it by clicking on and changing the numbers here. So reinforcement separation, height number of units from the bottom, this is for where the first layer of grid's gonna be, number of units from the top, minimum anchorage left, uh, reinforcement length to height ratio, uh, and then re minimum reinforcement length. So you can adjust those uh, in the program here uh, for a specific job. Factors of safety are the standard factors of safety. Again, the yellow is the um, uh, default values. If you want to increase or decrease the factors of safety, uh, you are they can be adjusted here. Uh, and design inputs. On all our wall systems, we're going to have a reinforcement coverage ratio of 100%. Uh, if you have a coverage ratio that's less than that, which we don't recommend, uh, you could place that in here. Uh, conventional analysis is going to be um, uh, for your basic for a gravity wall situation. So we're going to have base sliding, uh, bearing capacity overturning uh, for for a uh, gravity wall situation. Uh, cr common criteria is common uh, between uh, both uh, a reinforced wall and a conventional wall. And here we have minimum embedment uh, depth, which is six inches, uh, percentage at 10%, and then uh, embedment with the toe slope greater than 18.4 degrees, uh, we're gonna use 14% uh, percent on that. Uh, the program is also set up to, to allow us to do a no finds analysis. Um, which no finds concrete behind the back of the retaining wall uh, and gives those factors of safety. The no finds analysis is available only in the NCMA uh, design methodology and none of the other methodologies. Uh, if I go back to my project page and I click on and go to the ash toe and come back to my um, project I'm working on, everything will come up based on LRFD or load resistant factors. And again, these are uh, the standard defaults and the standard tested information uh, for us, and you can adjust these uh, based on your confidence level in, in what you're doing there. I won't go too far into this, uh, get more into the program, but that is available in the difference between that. So I'm gonna come back to my project page, I'm gonna go back to NCMA, and then I'm gonna work off my wall here. So once I've done that, I can pick, come into my wall unit, I can pick my uh, wall unit uh, type, uh, we have a drop down box here uh, for keystone lip lug systems and keystone pin systems uh, some some of you may be asking um, what is a keystone lip lug system uh, through acquisitions uh, keystone has acquired uh, some lip lug systems that are branded and will be branded uh, keystone hardscapes and these systems are available in select markets so if i click on the uh, Kick on the, click on the lip lug system here, come down to a wall unit, and here is the designation for the different wall units. Uh, we, we have uh, those available and check in your marketplace if those are available to you. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna go with the Keystone standard pin systems, uh, and then we click on this, and we bring down the different pin systems that are available. Uh, when you get download the program, uh, this is what comes standard loaded in there. Uh, and this covers a majority of wall units that are available uh, out on the market. Uh, check again with your uh, in your area which uh, which products are available to you. For this example, I'm going to go with the Compact Three unit. Uh, as uh, on this one, uh, what what you'll see happen is the face unit height, face unit width come in. All the units that are in the yellow boxes are set uh, in the program and not adjustable. Um, and then you can change, what you can adjust is the face batter from a zero batter to four to an eight degree batter, four being uh, interchanging between the, the zero and the eight degree setback. 
It gives you the percent area of hollow core, cap height, uh, shear capacity uh, data. Basically, this is block on block shear strength. Uh, this is tested if you do need test reports for shear data or connection data, uh, let us know and we can get that information to you. Um, I'm going to go with the setback of the wall of eight degrees. And over here, we have what we can do as a quantity estimate, what the program does uh, that the key, old key wall pro program did, didn't do is estimate quantities. Uh, the program can do its design and then also estimate quantities. Uh, this, in this portion here, we're estimating the quantity for the leveling pad. So we have base extent, which um, places how much a leveling pad is in front of the wall and behind the wall. So we'd have eight inches here and eight inches here. And then if we had a specific base thickness that we wanted to use, say eight inches, it would draw us a picture of what we're going to be using uh, for size of the leveling pad. So the calculation would be a, a cubic yard quantity of leveling pad material. Uh, top of wall grades, uh, if we have a situation where the block is going to be above the profile of the grade, say we want to expose the wall um, a foot above the uh, top of the of the grade behind the wall, uh, we can put a, above profile grade and we can assign that a distance. What that does is calculates a quantity of wall facing uh, above the grade and for the entire length of the wall. Uh, what it doesn't do is change what the loading will be. The loading will be at the grade that you pick when you profile out the wall. Uh, you can also uh, choose to have, you can also choose to put the um, block below the profile of the grade, say you're in a situation uh, that you're going to have a concrete coping at the top of the wall, uh, and that's going to take up a foot. Uh, so your block will be a foot down below the, the grade, and the concrete coping will make up for the rest of that. We can figure out a quantity of wall facing based on, on, on that being a foot below there. Once we uh, get that all set, we're going to keep those numbers, and we can come into our re reinforcement tab. Uh, we have loaded... Uh, each block has specific uh, geogrid systems uh, that are loaded per block, and basically that is blocks uh, that have been tested with those geogrids. Um, we have some others available. They're just not common, so we didn't include those in here. So if you're working with a, a geogrid uh, type that's not included in here, um, give us a call. We probably have that testing. We can get you a template uh, to load into your program. Uh, for this example today, I'm just going to pick the uh, the Mirify uh, product. Um, once I pick the Mirify product, it populates what connection data we have with the Compact 3 unit and the various different types of uh, mirror grid geogrids. Uh, for this example, I'm going to only choose one uh, type of grid. I, I highlight the grid I want to use and place that over into the uh, used in this wall uh, selection. Um, what we have once that is picked, it populates the type of grid, uh, when the version, uh, when this was last updated uh, for connection strength. Uh, as testing goes on and, and more things are done, you might see a version update uh, change uh, to, to, the, to the data file. Um, it populates everything in yellow here uh, with the ultimate strength, creep strengths, installation damage, coefficients of direct sliding interaction and those type of things and our connection capacity and connection um, envelope for that grid and then we have block on block shear data for that. What you also want to look at is uh, what type of soil you're going to have in here uh, and what that'll do is as you pick these it will change its coefficient of interaction, installation damage, and long-term design strength based on the soil type that you're going to pick. Uh, in, the, in the soils report, we had a clay and so silt soil, uh, so that's what we're going to ch choose there. Uh, if for some reason on this design I wanted to go to grid increments of half, half a foot or two foot, I can uh, change that here uh, for this specific uh, design analysis here. Um, one other thing I want to show you, if I click on to professional mode here, uh, once I click on professional mode, you'll see it opens up uh, these windows. So I am able to adjust the creep numbers and installation damages uh, by myself and affect what my long-term design strength will be. 
Uh, again, a designer. This is a designer preference, and I caution you that you, you know what uh, what you're doing when you do change those. I'm going to go back to the standard mode here, and you can see that closes that back out. Uh, once we pick our grid type, if I'm into a taller wall, I might want to have a, a, a second type of grid in there that I can use in the analysis, or three types. Uh, we can you can populate that how you see fit. Uh, once we have that done. Uh, we can come into our soil conditions just like most design softwares uh, that you that are out there. Uh, you can you can put in your soil conditions. Uh, the soils report gave us a friction angle of 28 degrees. We're going to use that uh, information for the reinforced, retained, and foundation soils. Uh, you can adjust those as you see fit there. Uh, in the standard mode, it'll only allow us to put cohesion into the foundation soil. If I come back to the professional mode here, I can add cohesion uh, into the retained soil. Uh, be careful uh, with that uh, because it will have a, as a, as a warning shows here, uh, an effect on the, on the stability of the wall. So we'll go back to standard mode in there. Uh, we get down to the bottom part here. Uh, we're able to, uh, everything below the soils information here uh, is a quantity estimate uh, for drainage rock uh, behind the behind the wall and foundation drains and for uh, chimney drains. So I've clicked off include drainage. I click on include drainage. I can add a face drain. I can tell it how thick it needs to be, what type of cap impervious cap I'm going to have. If I want to have eight inches of impervious soil on top of that, and then I can have uh, the leveling or the drainage rock come down to the grade in front of the wall or at the base of the wall. This is a quantity calculation based on height and width of your drainage material. I can do the same thing if I um, gonna end up with a blanket drain. If I have a high water table and I wanna put a blanket drain in, I can figure out a quantity for that. And then if I have a chimney drain, I can adjust that height uh, so I can figure out quantities for that. Uh, none of these have an effect on the wall design. They're only quantity calculations. Uh, another thing that we can do is we can add uh, a retained fill cut angle. Uh, it's hard to show this example. I would have a certain length of uh, reinforcement in my reinforced zone. And at the end of that reinforcement or where you make your cut, I'm going to have some type of cut coming up uh, of retained soil. Uh, typically one-to-one uh, -one type of slope, so I could put in a 45. This is not going to show uh, me in my example here, uh, but what this will calculate is the amount of soil that's at the back of the reinforcement to that cut zone that you made. It's a quantity calculation. It has nothing to do with the design uh, implementation uh, on the design part of things. Uh, once we have those filled in, we can come in, um, add our seismic analysis, if we want to, just click on the box, add your peak acceleration for the ex example and, and, and the amount of time we have. We won't get into the seismic analysis part of this. Um, once we've gotten that stuff entered, we can come in and we can station out our wall. Uh, here's where the, the program becomes quite unique, uh, quite helpful. Uh, it designs your wall based on the entire wall profile and loading condition uh, on a specific uh, site uh, rather than doing individual sections where you would have multiple sections, the program will uh, develop the panelization or sections itself, and then design those each based on uh, a certain height of wall. So it'll create that, and I'll show you the panels here in a bit. Um, this is my stationing uh, from uh, the wall design that I showed earlier. Uh, we're gonna start at station zero. That wall is 120 feet long. Uh, the top of wall changes based um, from 95 up to 99 and back to 96 at these various stations along the length of the wall. I'm able to add, uh, for geometry purposes, crest offset and crest elevations. Uh, this is information that is exported when you do your G-slope or Risa slope analysis. Uh, this helps set up uh, some of the parameters for uh, implementation into the G, in, into those slope stability analysis uh, software programs. Uh, the program, uh, Keywall Pro, does not do global stability analysis, and the limitation on this does limit you on what you can import um, to those global stability software programs. 
uh, so you might have to add more information once you get into those uh, but we can set up what our crest offset and crest elevation is uh, and then at the base of the wall I've stationed this out 0 to 120 put my bottom grades in the wall I can also in, inset my toe offset and toe elevation uh, I can override my embedment uh, right now the program is set up to calculate the embedment based on uh, the defaults I put in my design criteria and when I get to the next a tab on the panel page we can adjust that also uh, but if you have a situation where uh, right away you know hey there's a sprinkler head box that's going to be right near the front of the wall the leveling pad is going to be at pretty close to that elevation I can uh, uh, change my embedment depth in various stations by just clicking on on those in that information and it'll change it it doesn't show it here it'll show it in the uh, in, next page so I'm just going to delete these back out here but you are able to um, put those in and man manually manipulate what your embedment depth will be there again your toe offset and toe elevations are setting up uh, what's going on at the front of the wall and we encourage you to put those in but uh, in respect of time I won't uh, get into that the resolve station tab here basically resolves the elevations uh, from the stationing differences that you have from uh, the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall so this incorporates all of them and resolves the differences in the uh, elevations uh, through uh, through those stations we got that information in we can come to the, the panelization of the wall uh, the wall is, will panelize itself uh, we can, we're allowed to set what we want to have for base stepping and coursing uh, from one to two to three units I typically say don't go more than three units on uh, on your base steps there uh, we want to minimize those as much as possible uh, we can include or not include uh, the cap height in the wall if I regenerate the the, the wall panel here uh, we will see the grading and we'll see an adjustment to the top of the wall and then we can generate this again and I must have set up in here I'm going to have to rechange that okay that sets my my grade uh, with the top of the wall with the cap unit on it if I didn't include my cap height in there uh, we would see the cap height being above the top of the wall for this example we will include the uh, cap height in there we can also adjust the embedment from what the uh, design criteria page showed as 10 percent uh, minimum embedment of a half a foot uh, we're going to align the the top of the wall the grade with the top of the wall rather than the bottom of the wall in this example and we can set a datum in here uh, to uh, set how the wall geometry sets in there also uh, other thing we can do is show or not show the coursing of the block onto the wall face uh, as we go through here you can see there is a diamond shape down here that indicates the tallest wall section uh, as it has paneled it out what the program is doing is selecting an individual wall height carrying that out for a certain distance till the wall wall height changes creating thus creating the panels it indicates what our top of elevation is or with the panel what the base elevations are and what the height is of that also gives you what the area is of the panel um, we can manipulate how the panels uh, interact with each other uh, if I have a situation where I don't like the way the wall is stepping in there I can I can take this panel and I can merge it with the other panel and I can split those back in half so I'm able to do those kind of things if I want to increase my wall height I can come in here and increase that panel height and it affects the panel that we are on so we can oops, decrease our panel height also we can also do the same to the bottom of the wall and we can also do the same left and right so you can customize your panel locations uh, how you want that to how, how you want it to look so I'm going to regenerate this so I get back to my starting spot uh, other thing that we can do is uh, add markers uh, into the wall say I want to at uh, I want to create a new marker marker being say um, uh, manhole that's behind the wall or where the parking lot starts I can assign it a station number I can give it a name um, in here 
and then we can just say like manhole one and then I can save save that and close that and it'll give me a marker here that hey there's a manhole there I could come in here and put in the parking lot if I wanted to and indicate hey this is where the parking lot is uh, at these are just identifiers uh, for you when the profiles are done that you can uh, show people hey let's worry about the manhole let's worry about the parking lot those are things that are going to happen in behind the wall um, so we got our panel the way we want it we like the way the panel layout is uh, and we can move on uh, to our to our loading condition once we import our loading conditions uh, or get to the loading condition page uh, we can add uh, slopes to the wall uh, what we can do here is I usually start out at the left in this situation we had uh, a level slope at the top of the wall. Uh, we can also change this to uh, say we're going to have a 14 degree slope at the back of the wall and let's have it go back five feet. The typical section will show that for this certain panel. Uh, say it's a situation where that slope is uh, continuous uh, throughout the whole entire wall. We can extend that uh, to the right and put that loading condition on the entire wall system. Uh, if it's a situation that it doesn't extend and it ends right here, uh, we can we can highlight our wall sections here, and then we can clear that loading and say from this point here, I'm going to put a 250 live load surcharge on there. I'm going to offset that surcharge three feet because the parking lot is three feet behind there, and then now I can extend that left or right or apply it to all. But in this case, we're going to have a situation where there's a slope and then it changes into a parking lot uh, in behind the wall uh, that will be our loading conditions we'll set that up as for our loading conditions uh, we can uh, manipulate our sections a couple different ways we can come in and individually click on them uh, we can come in and highlight them completely and do our manipulation based on that uh, if you'll see here uh, there's a bolded number that indicates the tallest section of the wall we'll move on uh, to the design phase we've got our loading conditions in we got our soil parameters in now we're going to come into our design phase uh, in our design phase here uh, what we have is every cell we click on we can see what elevation the wall is at and then I usually start by using uniform grid lengths. I like to have my walls designed with uniform grid lengths, and then I generate all. Based on the loading and the soil conditions, a program will generate uh, the wall design. It'll try its best to implement the, the grids in a continuous layer from, one, from the start of the wall to the end of the wall. In some cases, that's not always the case for it to do that, uh, so there will be some man manual manipulation for that to occur. Um, Based on the section that I'm at, I'm looking at my wall design here uh, for that section. Three block spacing, two foot, two foot increments there, and this is all set up in our design criteria page. Our length is generated based on the increments that we chose earlier. Um, this line back here is not the failure plane behind here. That's that cut friction angle uh, that we had in our, in our soil conditions here. If I come back to the retain cut area number, and take that back out of there and go to my design page it removes that so that was my fill quantity that I would have here of retained soil uh, this is my assumed failure plane behind the wall and then my different uh, offset loading condition uh, as shown for that section so what we can do is manipulate then where the grid layers are at say in this panel here I end up with this little short section of grid here um, if I feel comfortable with my design and I feel comfortable going to a two block spacing I can remove that layer of grid I, by double clicking on the block below it and removing that and then I can come in and I can hit analyze panel and it'll analyze the panel uh, you see it turned the panel to a red color uh, that basically saying that the number of units at the top of the wall is greater than the max that we had set up in in the design software uh, or in the design criteria page uh, so it gives us a warning that that that's in failure uh, that's something you can look at as a designer and make that adjustment uh, other things that you can do here 
is you can move all the grids up or down, uh, and then every time you make an adjustment, you have to reanalyze the panel. Um, I'm able to now come in and I can extend those grid layers to the right, and I'll recalculate those grid layers based on that. And if I generate, um, analyze all, you will see these all turn to red, showing I have some type of failure mechanism there. And I go to those sections and look at what those are. And it's basically my top of wall spacing for my top layer of grid is not where it needs to be. So you can play around with this. You can create grid groups, uh, grid groups based on size and length of the reinforcement. Uh, we do have trial wedge ability with this. It's unique to the program. Uh, I have that on the apply button. Uh, for more information on trial wedge, if you're not familiar with it, uh, see the Keystone Design uh, Manual for that information. Um, my auto grid groups, I can apply uh, and then give it an increment length, and basically it just tells you what length those sections are uh, based on on the on the grid grouping. Um, I can come in here and I can manipulate uh, the grid length. Uh, say I want to make that to eight feet long, I can edit that, adjust that to eight feet long come back in here, analyze the panel, and it'll give me my factors of safety uh, based on that design uh, layout that I've shown there. Uh, we can minimize the length of the grids um, by just uh, clicking the cut button and then analyzing that panel again. So there's a variety of different things that you can play with in here, almost too numerous to talk about uh, in the amount of time we have, uh, but everybody kind of gets the idea of what you're able to do. You're able to set the loading uh, based on the conditions, and uh, it'll design each and every section and give you a layout so you're e easily able to manipulate uh, all the grid design there. Uh, I'm going to go back to my original uh, design uh, and let that populate that section in there. The last tab that we have here is internal compound stability. Uh, this is basically going to analyze uh, the section that you choose uh, for internal compound stability and, and draw your wedges there. In the settings page, you can uh, adjust this and its factors of safety there. Um, once we've got our wall design done, we're, we're happy with the way everything looks. We come back to file and then I want to print this out as a PDF report. I can come in here. The PDF reports are very, very customizable. Uh, I always like to do a, a project material summary uh, a section analysis summary. Uh, panelization details can be helpful uh, and a cross-sectional uh, cross sectional drawing and I can put the details in there. You can read through the different things, play around with uh, what each of these will do for you and customize your printout to what you want to want to do for uh, your, your, your particular application. Uh, I got to pick a station. Uh, I can print out all the stations or I can print print individual stations. If you remember, uh, wall eight was the tallest section. Uh, I'm going to print this out. So we'll do a print preview of this to see, show you what uh, the printouts look like. So basically your, your printout, I'm going to get this to fit my page a little bit better. Um, your printout will contain the project information, some notes on here, and it gives you wall quantities. We have uh, compact three facing unit gives you wall linear footage. Uh, linear footage you'll notice is different than what I had. I had a 120 foot long wall. Well, if you put a whole bunch of units that are 18 inches wide, they end up being 121 feet long. A number of pins, uh, top steps in the wall, facing area, cap area, wall area. Here's my fill uh, that I'm going to be needing for my leveling pad, my reinforced fill, my drainage area, and core fill. Drainage area being the, the amount of uh, drainage aggregate from the back face of the wall to the prescribed width that you would put in there, and core fill being uh, the amount of uh, core fill in the block unit, and it give you a quantity of geogrid required for the wall uh, that we designed. Uh, as we come through here, it'll give you a section analysis. I picked just one section. If you wanted to print out all the different uh, panelizations in there, uh, you can print that out also. It'll give you uh, your soil parameters, uh, your factors of safety, and your design um, results. We can also print out the section geometries, and then we can also print out a, a typical section uh, for the highest section there. 
Uh, those are different things you can do uh, with the printout. As I said before, those are all customizable and you can uh, find the appropriateness uh, for your situation. And you can also save these uh, into your uh, specific folder that you want to. Uh, another thing that very nice and very slick about this program, we can export this program, the, the results to AutoCAD. Uh, we can pick which wall we want to have export to AutoCAD, and we can also export uh, various different typical sections into AutoCAD. We're able to set uh, scale, uh, some formatting uh, things here, and uh, how you want it to go into AutoCAD. Uh, we'll export this over into AutoCAD. When I show this program off and everybody understands how long it takes to uh, uh, do, a, uh, do a wall design and then to actually put it together, it's very basic on its wall sections uh, that, that it's going to print out. Uh, so you can, cut, you can adjust these the way you want to. Uh, what it's very nice at doing is doing, excuse me here, is uh, wall profiles. Basically the profile that we saw in the program uh, and profiled out is now laid into AutoCAD with the appropriate stationing at the bottom of the wall and the appropriate stationing, top of wall stepping, uh, bottom of wall elevations, uh, where the grid layers are and uh, what elevations those are. It's showing the blocks uh, in the face, face of the wall. Every 60 feet it was showing me uh, uh, a column of block in there that's three feet wide. That's also shown in there. Like I said before in the design, if you want to in the options, it set this to zero. It would show all the block facing into the front of the wall here. So that's all exported right into uh, AutoCAD for you and ready to go. Put your border on it and uh, basically you've uh, taken a lot of drawing work. The nice thing about the program, it integrates uh, the designer, your CAD technician, and the geotechnical engineer all into one program uh, with the export features that, that we have in this. Uh, I'm about out of time here. I got a few, a few minutes for, for questions, uh, so I'd like to open it up to questions. Uh, and again, uh, find the software and download it. If you have questions uh, on it in particular that you don't want to ask today, uh, feel free to ask us uh, any questions that you have. Dave, David, I'll turn it back over to you for any questions. Sure. Uh, we have a few questions that are coming in. And again, if you have a question, just type that into the question box and we will answer that for you. So one of the questions we have is, how will the program updates be issued? One of the program updates, uh, they'll be on, on, on an ongoing basis. Uh, what we don't see is any major updates. There'll be minor updates. Uh, what you'll have happen as the program updates and when you open up the program, Along the bottom part of your screen, it'll tell you that it's been updated. Uh, and then if, you, if there's a update to the connection data files or the GeoGrid files, uh, that'll also show on there, but it'll be automatic and it'll notify you that as soon as you, if you have an internet connection, it will search, it goes to that, checks if there's any updates, makes those updates and makes you aware of those updates. Uh, and it will show in red um, that there was an update uh, made available for that. Perfect. Another question we have is, does AutoCAD need to be installed on the same system as the design software? It, it, does, it does not have to be on the same system because you can export and save the file and, and then somebody else, and then you could transfer that file to somebody else um, and then they could open it up. So it is a, a document that they would be able to open up separately. Great. Another question that we have is, how do you handle changing soil types within the same wall? That's a good question. If you have a, a, a condition where uh, you want to check uh, using on-site soils uh, in your soil conditions, uh, use on-site soils as a reinforced fill, and then um, check it by using uh, select granular backfill in the reinforced area, what I would suggest doing is create your first wall, and then when I come into walls, I can come in and copy wall with stations, creating a, a, another wall, and then clicking on that wall, coming into my soil conditions, and adjusting the soil conditions. So wall one would be um, having friction angle at 28 degrees, wall three, I could have a 
say a friction angle of 34 degrees in here and I could do my wall analysis and my panelization and stationing my stations would all be the same my panels would all be the same and that would all be the same the other way that you can do that is you can come in and make a revision and have it um, as a revision with different parameters in there you could do it either way great <clears throat> Hey, we have a couple of questions related to AutoCAD that I want to ask you about. Uh, one asks, can you speak to the, the ability to import alignment with associated elevations from AutoCAD? I'm not sure on the question. That might be something that we'd have to uh, address afterwards because I'm not sure on what, what they're looking for there. Got it. Understood. All righty. Uh, will plan view be available for export into AutoCAD in the future? Um, I, I, I can't answer that question at this point in time. It might be something that we can take a look at and, and add it at a later date. Um, that would be outside of my scope right now. Got it. Okay. So, so how would you handle doing a full wall analysis and conventional wall analysis on the same project? That's another question that came in. That's a good question. There's there's a couple things that uh, come up uh, when you do a wall design. Uh, two things is methodologies and conventional wall and a full wall analysis. Uh, once you pick the methodology in that program, you're not able to switch uh, between the methodologies. So you will have to create a separate um, met, uh, pro, uh, project folder or project identifier one, say if you're doing AASHTO or NCMA, uh, you'd have to have two separate files. Uh, if you got a wall or a project that's got, say, 10 walls on it, eight of the 10 walls are reinforced walls that'll have GeoGrid in them, but two of them are conventional walls. Uh, once we uh, pick our uh, wall analysis type um, or with the National Concrete Masonry Association, I'm not able to switch to a conventional wall analysis. What you can do is uh, assign a section of wall to, a, to like 10 feet long and say it's 10 feet tall. And then I can design it that way as an individual section. Or if I want to do it as a gravity wall, I do it um, in a conventional wall analysis by just assigning the wall a certain length. Say it's five feet. So it's just looking at a wall that's five feet tall and then you can do a gravity wall analysis in there. So you can't um, you can't intermix them into the same wall here, but you can intermix them by creating different walls. Great, thank you very much. Well, we want to be respectful of everybody's time, so we're going to conclude today's webinar right now. Uh, however, we do have a couple house cleaning things to go over bef so before we sign off. So if your question was not answered in today's webinar, a Keystone representative will reach out to you with a response within 24 hours. And we do have some of those because we have a lot of questions coming in. When this webinar ends, a survey will appear, and we ask you that you take a few minutes to fill out the survey as we are always looking for ways to improve, uh, and your opinions on this webinar are important to us. As I said earlier, a follow-up email will be sent out tomorrow to all the attendees that will contain a recording of today's webinar. So if you want to review something or share it with a colleague, you'll be able to do that. So that ends our webinar today. We want to thank everybody for joining us and have a great day. Thank you.